It's 6.30 straight ahead, an Amber Alert out of Carter County canceled, an infant found safe, but who authorities are looking for now. And a new property tax law recently signed by the Texas governor, what you need to know if you live in Grayson County. And temperatures cooler than usual for June, just how cold it'll be once you head out the door this morning. These stories and more are next as the news starts right now. Texoma's number one rated newscast, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 6.30 a.m. And a good morning to you, Texoma. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jeremy Thomas. Chief Meteorologist Steve Lenore joins us now. And Steve, the last time we had a sunrise like that, I got tripped up on my words. That was just absolutely beautiful. Man, make you just think, wow, time to reset. Yes. I mean, what a nice way to start the day. Oh, it really yeah. is beautiful. So good morning, everybody. We are looking at a fantastic start to your Thursday. Hope you're uh, getting off to a good start. If not, hey coffee machine is waiting. So here's your satellite and radar image where you can see that we do have a few high clouds that are coming in from the west. Right now things are flawlessly clear. There will be a, some scattered cloud cover mixing with a lot of blue and sunshine today. It's going to be a gorgeous Thursday with uh, temperatures, as Jeremy mentioned, unseasonably cool to start things off. 54 right now in Ada, Colgate and Sulphur. Davis here at 54 degrees. Marriott at 55 along with Medill. Sherman Denison at 60 degrees and heading up the highway towards Colbert where you're 61 along with Durant and Hugh. Uh, you're at 59 degrees, almost no wind. You can see there, that's the effect of high pressure being directly overhead. We'll have very light winds throughout the day. A good amount of sunshine, really going to be a pretty one. Here's your hour by hour forecast taking you through the morning hours where we rise in the 60s, hitting the 70s for lunchtime. This is going to be a great day. Take a long lunch. I mean, it's going to be tough to beat, and we'll top out in the low 80s this afternoon. Now, we've got a small chance of rain tomorrow and a big chance of rain, unfortunately, on Father's Day. We'll throw all the numbers at you a bit later, Jeremy. Thank you, Steve. Happening overnight, an Amber Alert has been canceled for an Ardmore baby boy who has been found. Officials say a four-month-old, Leighton Williams, is in good condition and in protective custody of the Tahlequah Police Department. Now deputies are searching for the suspect, 33-year-old Danny Gordon, who they believe to be armed and may be the father of the infant. He is driving a black 2015 Dodge Challenger with tinted windows and the license plate reading BQS057. Authorities say Gordon forcefully took the infant from his mother and attempted to run her over with his vehicle. They said that Gordon told them that he would not bring the baby back. If you have any information, you were urged to contact law enforcement. And new this morning, Love County authorities say they have captured a fugitive wanted on three felony charges. The sheriff's office says 28-year-old Caleb Holland is in custody. He was wanted for eluding a protective order violation and interfering with a 911 call. The sheriff's office says that the Long Grove Police Department assisted in Holland's arrest. A Denison church is out of hundreds of dollars after burglars hit their buses parked outside. News Tools Stan Smith tells us what they stole and how you can help bring the thieves to justice. Johnny Smith was getting ready to pick up kids for vacation Bible school in this bus Monday morning. But when he turned the key, he said the bus made a rather unusual sound. When I started it up, it sounded like a tank. Smith says he still used that bus to pick up the kids and thought that bus was the only one with a problem. So he used a different one later that day. Little did he know. And when we left with it to take them home, that bus did the same thing. So I was pretty sure something that was up. In total, catalytic converters were stolen from three out of four Parkside Baptist Church buses. Denison police say it happened around three Monday morning. Surveillance shows the suspects driving a 2008 to 2012 Jeep Liberty. A representative from the church says it cost them about $1,500 to replace the catalytic converters, which they needed to fix quickly. We have uh, kids going on mission trip and all kinds of activities going on this summer, then, and all of them will be used and will be needed. Catalytic converters are used to reduce emissions, but the buses can still run without them. They're made from a platinum-like metal, and according to a local salvage shop, they can be sold for up to $600. Police say this is still an ongoing investigation, but Smith says they want this case solved soon. I, I think anytime anybody gets uh, robbed or anything like that, you have a vulnerable feeling for a while. It, that, it affects you in that way as well. So, All three catalytic converters were replaced by Wednesday afternoon. Lieutenant Mike Epler says if you have any information about who might have taken these parts, you can call the Denison police at the number on the bottom of your screen. In Denison, Stan Smith, News 12. Another problem brought on by the heavy rain we've had over the last month, Oklahoma State University now warning ranchers to be on the lookout for foot rot that is being found in cattle and could harm their cattle. News 12's Benjamin Diaz has the story. 
Well, the wetter the year it is, the more common it's going to be. Jeff Hazelius is the owner and operator of Durant Stockyards. Throughout the years in his experience with cattle, he says foot rot is something you'll eventually run into. You know, it's almost basically like getting an infection underneath your fingernail. And, and so it just makes them real tender-footed. Um, a simple antibiotic shot and usually they'll get right over it. The infectious disease can cause swelling in at least one foot. And according to Oklahoma State University, it can cause problems problems walking and decreased weight gain or milk production. Jeff says that if left untreated, it can even cause permanent damage. The amount of rainfall and, and the kind of pastures that they stand on, if they're standing in, in a lot of standing water all the time, then you're probably going to see more cases of foot rot. Hazalia says that if cattle is being sold to be slaughtered, the disease won't have much of an impact on their value. But if the cattle is being sold for breeding, then that's a different story. A farmer's not going to be willing to pay as much for a bread cow or a pair to take home and turn back out if they have something wrong with them. OSU officials say that the most common symptoms in cattle who have foot rot are a fever and refusing to eat. Hazelius adds that the physical symptoms will be very noticeable in what can be a very contagious disease. You'll see it right off the bat. They'll limp. They won't want to put any weight on that particular foot. And that was Benjamin Diaz reporting. As medicine has advanced, there are now vaccines that are supposed to prevent the disease. Treatment of foot rot is usually successful if treated early. Governor Greg Abbott signed a new property tax law. While the governor and politicians in Austin claim that the new law will lower your property taxes, people in Grayson County won't see a difference. News Wells Jen Phillips breaks it down. Governor Greg Abbott says SB2 delivers significant property tax reforms that will cap property tax increases without voter approval and provide tax reform to homeowners and businesses across Texas. So what we passed was 2.5% hard cap for schools and 3.5% for cities and counties. I wanted 2.5 across the board. It sounds monumental. In Grayson County, the amount of taxes collected went up 5.85%. But that includes brand new properties, which would be exempt from the new law. When you take into account revenue from existing properties, tax collections were only up 2.1%, which means Grayson County would not have been affected at all by the new law. And what that allows us to do is to fund government with new money, not with appraisal creep. In fact, Grayson County Judge Bill Majors and the county commissioners lowered the rate your property is taxed at by 5% last year and by 10% each of the four years before that. It's going to be, again, certainty for homeowners knowing that you're not going to get 8%, 9%, 10% every year. While the commissioner's court has managed to lower the county tax rate every year, it has not been substantial enough to compensate for the increase in property values. And this new law does not change how much your home is appraised for. So in theory, your property taxes could still go up. While I applaud the legislature for wanting to stem out-of-control taxes, we haven't seen that in Grayson County. Majors says that surplus means he and the commissioners could make room for an even bigger decrease in tax rate for the next year. And the politicians in Austin are hinting at the same thing. People are working their entire lives to pay off their homes and then they have to rent them back from the government. That's just not, it's fundamentally uh, unsound. And I'm glad we advanced. This is a big step in the right direction, but we're not through. The takeaway, Texas landmark property tax reform means nothing to Grayson County taxpayers. The numbers are just coming in, but with our growth, if we're not doing that, then we're not doing our job for the taxpayers. Reporting in Grayson County, Jen Phillips, News 12. Several Texomans who work with kids and teenagers received training in Tishomingo on how to know the signs and respond to mental illness. More than 30 community members took part in the training hosted by Inca RSVP, funded from a three-year federal grant with the goal of training 750 people in South Central Oklahoma by 2021. The course covered the prevalence of mental health disorders and typical adolescent development versus signs of a developing disorder, Potential warning signs can be withdrawal from all social activities, losing interest in favored activities, and not replacing those interests. The main goal of the grant is to increase awareness when it comes to mental health issues, um, increase literacy, and we provide resources so that way people know where to go to get help or to help direct someone to help. Organizers say they will have more of these free trainings sponsored by grants until September 2021 and hope to expand to other Texoma counties and organizations. You can find the link to these upcoming trainings on our website and app. If you plan on driving near the 2800 block of Loy Lake Road in Denison, be prepared to navigate some construction 
for the next few weeks. Because of the apartment complex under construction in the area, construction crews will need to add a deceleration lane. The city of Denison expects this project to take up to 45 days. Denison Public Works Director Jimmy Moon gives alternate routes that you can take if you live in the area because some roads will be closed. All the westbound lane will be closed. When, if they're coming westbound, they'll have to take Coffin Street over to Park and then down to the Spur 503. And then eastbound lane will be open the entire time. 24 hours a day. The lane closure on the westbound side will be closed 24 hours. The road will close on Saturday. Bass for Cash, an event at Lake Texoma, has been canceled due to high lake levels. It's a fishing tournament fundraiser for the Preston Fire Rescue. The third annual event was scheduled for June 29th at Highport Marina. They say they will refund entry fees to anyone who has already signed up, and they say they plan to be back next year. Well, Steve, it seems like the lake is actually starting to go down as well, which is good news for a lot of people. Yeah, it really is. We need to drain that thing off. It's going to take a while. It's a big lake, but we are losing a few inches per day on that. And if a picture's worth a 1,000 words, a video is worth 10,000 words. So check it out. And good morning, Texoma. Fantastic sunrise in